Hi, welcome. I'm Tommy Holst, and this is the Dropcast Movie Poster Podcast Release Edition. Today, I will have the chance to talk to the very prolific artist Chris Weston. He worked on so many different projects, from、uh, costume design to、uh, album covers to movie posters to other illustrations that you can think of. He, he's done it all. So it's very excited、uh, that I have him on here today. And later on, I will talk to James about the latest releases, of course. So stay tuned. And smash that like button. Chris, how you doing, man? Hi, how's it going? Pretty good. I'm I'm really excited to have you on. I mean,、um, I've I've known your work for quite some time, and、uh, especially、uh, via Vice Press. And then、um, James told me this little fact、uh, that you have done costume. I think it was costume design for the Last Jedi, right? Oh yeah, that's right.、Um, that that's was amazing. One of the,、uh, yeah. Oh yeah. There was, and I, I wasn't the only comic book and movie poster artist either, because I was like sat opposite Jock. You know the famous <laughs> comics as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah.、Uh, you know, <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. You know, when I t-、uh, turned up and there, there was Jock.、Um, <laughs> actually, I think it did have a little slight warning from him, an ambiguous warning that he'd be there, but、uh, it, was, it was great.、Uh, and、um, Tonchi Zonjic, do, do you know his work, comic book? He drew.、Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not.、Oh, I can't remember the name of the character he drew. Now I'm terrible.、Um, It was,、uh, it was the spin-off character from Hellboy, the, the sort of 1930s superhero. Yeah.、Uh, oh, I can't remember now. Look. Was、Bob、it Abraham?、Stone. Is it Abraham? No. No, no. The, he's like a 30s pulp superhero. Lobster. Not sure. Oh, never mind. <laughs> we'll find.、Is... I'll find it out、yeah. and put it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so I was、on. there in、uh, Pinewood Studios with, with Jock and Tonchi. Uh, you know, it's, it's an amazing experience. We were there for months. I was there seven months, and I think Jock was even there longer. Actually, I think because he'd started before me and then finished after me.、Uh, what, was, what was your part on? Was it you who did the Luke Skywalker costume, or was it Jock who did? I, I think somebody. We all had a go at it,、um, but、uh, Jock's was the final one that was picked.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they often used to do that sort of make it competitive and get us all to have a go at the same. Character and sometimes they'd even、uh, mix and match, sort of like that. They say, "Oh, I like Tonchi's shirt, but I like Chris's trousers," and then they'd put them together. Yeah.、Uh, uh, yeah and, and so I did. I did design various versions of Luke, but、uh, Jocks is the one that made it onto the 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 screen. That's very interesting. What what、uh, what could we see from what you designed? What was on the screen? Or oh, the main thing I. The biggest things I did on it were pretty much every alien in the casino. I, I designed the costume for that. Awesome. I counted up. I think I did fifty-seven alien costumes for the casino scene alone. Crazy.、Um, Tonchi designed the human、uh, people in the casino,、mm-hmm. and I pretty much I worked quite closely with the、um, the, cost, the the creature workshop. So、uh, I, I got to do most of the alien costumes.、Uh, what, what else?、Uh, oh, I designed the the caretakers.、Mm-hmm. Um, you know the little sort of frog-like, nun-like creatures that、uh, that's awesome lived、yeah. on the desert. Look, yeah. I wish.、Uh, I mean, I have.、Uh, I, I don't. You, you probably can't really see it right now, but I have the Luke Skywalker, the last Jedi Luke Skywalker from uh, uh, Act Two. It's like right、oh, there、cool. behind me as a hot toy. Sadly, you didn't、yeah. design it. Otherwise, it would be a very great moment to show that. <laughs> oh no! I know. Damn that jock! <laughs> <laughs> Damn that jock! Yeah, he's. But he's、yeah. a good guy. He he's gonna、oh, come、yeah. on the podcast. I I wanted him on for quite some time, but、um, we still didn't find、uh, didn't find a time yet. So, but、uh, he's he's、uh, definitely on the wait list、uh, that I will have him、uh, on for a podcast interview as well. But let's yeah, talk. Yeah. Let's talk about your latest. Oh, say again.、Uh, well, was, the other one I wanted to mention because、uh, it, it's like it could have been 
an exciting moment for me. I, I, I designed the uh, the Canto by Policemen. Do you know them with oh, the blue yeah, yeah, tuning? Yeah. I came this close to being in the film because when they designed the costume, they brought yeah. the helmet back and tried it on. And then, is that my phone? I think it's yours, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me mute, mute that. Uh, uh, yeah, and they said, oh, Chris, it looks really good on you. You should, you should play one of the policemen in the film. And it was like all going to happen. And then at the last minute, it didn't happen. So oh. I could have been in Star Wars. But... So, so have you been in Croatia as well then? No, because no. because they filmed they filmed a bunch of a bunch of this stuff from the from the scene with the with the horses they filmed that that's in, right yeah. in Croatia yeah. I've I've been there after, like right after they filmed it or so yeah. so they still had at like at the housing ent uh, like some some of the entrances in the on the old town yeah. of that city they had uh, they had like the 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 doors they they had in the uh, on the set it was still there so it's like yeah. oh my god that's all, that's amazing. Uh, what's really strange is Tonchi is on is on the edge is from Croatia as well. So yeah. he was like in Pinewood working on Star Wars, and then they were shooting in Croatia, his home <laughs> country. Yeah, you know, at the same time. That's amazing. Yeah, but no, yeah, great. Friend. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> all good, all good. Yeah, the, I'm 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 totally interested in that. But but I want to I want to keep that uh, the, the the interesting bits for the podcast that we're probably hopefully going to do in the future, like have a long interview with you. That would be something okay, cool. I would be really yeah. interested in. But yeah, today is for the release podcast. We want to talk about your latest release with Vice Press. You did a great Nosferatu piece. Since I'm German, you lived uh, as, uh, for quite some time in Germany. Um, this is uh, something that hits home for both of us. And uh, first yeah. thing I want to know, uh, how, how did you get in touch with Vice Press? How, how did the contact there happen? Um, well, I've been working with them for quite a few years now. What was the first? I did. I think the first thing I did was um, that they had the license to do 2000 AD mm -hmm. posters, uh, Judge Dredd posters, and, and Strontium Dog. And I did. A, yeah. I think there's, I did a, a oh, Nemesis poster. There's one. Yeah. The uh, Lawmaker by, a, by Raid. Yeah, uh, I, I did a couple of them. That's how we, you know, introduced each other. So. They, they sort of picked me because of my comic work rather than my movie poster work. And then I did a couple of, I did, um, they always send me long lists of uh, licenses that they own. And I'm, I'm, one, and I'm really fussy, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> like, if I, I'm very picky about what I do. And eventually the, the prisoner came up, we did a, a prisoner poster. Mm. Uh, and I think that was a pre, uh, really much loved, um, Blowing my own trumpet poster uh, is quite successful. That one, uh, I, was, I was very proud of it. It's one of my like, one of the pieces of work I'm most proud of. Um, what, what did I do after that? I did we did the uh, Dracula and Phantom of the Opera, mm -hmm. and uh, I think at some point I need to complete the trilogy and do another Universal horror poster. Was, shouldn't it be a quadrilogy? So, a quadrilogy? Uh, uh, whatever. It's uh, yeah, it could be, could be. What you got? You got the bro well, it depends. you got you got the creature, haven't you? Of the, yeah, the creature, Blackwood. and we got the mummy, Frankenstein. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty to pick and, from. Yeah, and Invisible Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there's there's still plenty plenty left for you to knock yeah. it out because yeah, I I know uh, your your poster your posters were instant sellout definitely on these and uh, on on the on the Universal Monsters and I think uh, they they looked amazing and people really love what you've done with that so that's, oh thanks uh, very much I appreciate that great, great cheers. cheers so I really ought to get off my ass and do do the other ones I think at some point yeah you should yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like I think um I think I'm mostly drawn to Bride Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. That would be really good. The trouble with Bride of Frankenstein is there's very few um, photo references of the yeah. of of the bride herself, and you, you you see, and lots of people have done Bride of Frankenstein posters, uh, and they've pretty much all used the same image of her over and over again. Uh, I think if I was to do it, I would. I, w I don't think I'd want to use an existing still from the film. I think. Uh, which which make my, which makes the job all, all the harder. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I did the same with um, Phantom of the Opera. I I I don't think I used a. 
uh, an existing still. That, that I, I, I pretty much drew that one. I mean, I was obviously I had reference in front of me, but mm. I didn't actually trace an existing still. I try to avoid using uh, existing stills because you, you want to. I want to give something to someone that they can't get anywhere else. Really. Yeah. That's. That's a, that's a, I mean, it's it's a lot. It's like a lot of times, it's really hard for artists to do that, not yeah. go the referencing route. But uh, yeah, yeah. if an artist does it, it most of the time can turn out really great. And especially if that's yeah. their daily bread. I mean, they know how to draw. Yeah. And um, only problem is uh, if uh, the 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 licensing holder license holder doesn't like it. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I found a really good photo of Elsa Lancaster where she's not in makeup, mm -hmm. and but there's, there's enough there. I think, oh, I could use that to turn her into the bride. So I'm already thinking about it. <laughs> awesome, that sounds very good to hear. I mean, uh, James uh, Henshaw will probably uh, love to hear that that you move uh, like yeah. continue in the series. Um, yeah. So that's that's great to hear. So you've been with Vice Press for a long time, and now you turned out this Nosferatu piece. Uh, is Nosferatu, by the way, Universal? Is that Universal Monster no, License? No, I don't think so. I right? Think, I think we looked into. I think it's. Um, I think around, around around the world, it's copyright free. I think. I think so um, too. Yeah. It's fallen out of license. Uh, I think, except for Germany, and I think the copyright <laughs> runs out in like next year, a hundred years after it. Yeah, it could be, could be. I think, yeah, yeah. Should, is it yeah. this year or next year? Somewhere around there, somewhere. I think, it, I think it's next year. So I think in one more year and it will be free of copyright in Germany as well. But it's all quite complicated, isn't it? Because the film was banned, wasn't it? Because by, because it, the, it was sued by the estate of Bram Stoker for ripping off Dracula. Yeah. And they, and they actually got a... Uh, a a, a, a legal ruling that all the copies should be burnt, and they pretty much were. I think only about three survived. So all, all the all the copies we see of Nosferatu derived from three sources. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's terrible. It's yeah, and it's a uh, uh, crazy what it's done because there's in, in Berlin here there's the the film museum which uh, features a lot of uh, Nosferatu. Oh yeah, Babelsberg so. Studios. Uh, what's that? Is that Babelsberg Studios? Uh, they have. I think they have some more stuff there, but uh, since they didn't film a lot of stuff, I, 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 I don't think at all. The Caligiri and um, all those other ones, they were filmed there in, in Babelsberg and, and and in Spandau, the studio, the studios in Spandau, which is like a little uh, like the, the like on the outside of Berlin, but. Um, the the film museum is in in uh, in downtown Berlin here, and they okay. have they have a lot of props and stuff there. Oh, and also yeah, if, I must uh, if, come if, if you ever come back, mm -hmm. uh, I'll I'll gladly take you on a tour. So yeah, I'll, I'll take you up on that. that. That sounds great. As soon as this COVID is over, I'll come over for a weekend. It'd be great. Perfect. Sounds and, good to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, but going uh, back to Nosferatu, the yeah. the post. It wasn't originally a vice press. It's just something I drew from for my own pleasure, and I it's it, because I'm a, a I'm a fan of the film. Yeah, I created the poster without even thinking of vice press, and it was only after it was finished that I thought, oh, you know, what would be the best way to sell this? I mean, I had great plans to sell it myself, but I'm a mm. terrible businessman, and. <laughs> I never did get around to setting up a website. So then the next logical thing to do was just contact Vicings. I had a good relationship with them and I trusted mm -hmm. them and they've got a good reputation. I, I knew I knew they'd look after me. And so we sort of, uh, you know, sort of shook hands on it, really. And um, so it's a rare case of me bringing a poster to them rather than them contacting me. That's also hopefully that's something they can do more of. Yeah, that's but that's that's also a good thing if you mind. I mean, if you have great art and it's already finished, uh, you just need to find somebody with the license for it. In most cases, or if yeah. you don't need a license, somebody who yeah. trusts you and values your work. So I think that's uh, really amazing. Um, I don't know if you've seen because I think it was two or three months ago that when Greg Ruth um, did a piece, uh, the Nosferatu piece. Oh no, I didn't see it. In I'd love to see it. In graphite and pencil, and he he did all lock okay. in the middle, and then like the the his signature pose here you used as well, and then he had but he had some he drew some flames or like like some smoke coming up, which looks really amazing. 
also really oh really, well, I need to see that. wow pretty, pretty. Yeah. send that to me I, I will I will I will send you a link later uh, when we're done here um but yeah let's let's um talk about the print real quick uh the print is 18 by 34 is that correct inches yes yeah, yeah which is a strange shape yeah hey, exactly <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the two I, inches? I, I have no explanation other than, other than I just wanted it to look like a coffin. Oh, okay. But I, yeah, yeah, I, I see, I see, I see. Hmm? Yeah, 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 I see what you're saying. I had, um, I remember the, do, do, do you know the Martin Ensign print? I think it was Martin Ensign or was it Jason Edmondson? One of, one of the two who has, um, who made a actual, like a, like a, like a real coffin shaped like with, with edges. Oh, and stuff. yeah. I think I saw that afterwards. And then I thought, damn, someone's beaten me to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wish I'd, I, I wish I'd um, seen that before. Yeah, it is. But I'm yeah. thinking, I'm actually thinking of um, possibly doing like, like a really limited edition of 10 uh, printed on wood. I think that'd be pretty cool. That would be amazing, yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, I'm friends with a, a printing company, and they actually do a sort of like um, proper gicle printing. They they can mm -hmm. print onto any surface, so yeah, no problem. Built that's on wood. what uh, Laurent Dorieux he did that multiple times for his prints. Right. I know that for but for but in tw in the size in, in the shape of twenty four by thirty six. So that's yeah, yeah. Definitely was it, it was Definitely. Lauren Durier that did Dracula? Was it shaped as a coffin? No, 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 no. I think that was Jason Edmondson or Martin Ensign. Okay. One of the one of the two. I I don't remember who yeah, it was. Yeah. But yeah, so the there's a dish size of 100. Um, I think a couple are still available on the website, and uh, yeah, it's signed and hand numbered uh, screen print. So um, you, did did you print them or did you had them to sign or how how was it done? Um, yeah, I got them printed by uh, I think it was Longleaf in America. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it was actually cheaper for me to get it printed in America and then sent back to England than it is right? to find an English uh, company to, to do it. I think that's changed now. I think since the craze for screen prints has boomed in the last few years, I think that there are people have said to me, no, no, there are some good ones in England now. So hmm. I probably wouldn't have to do that again. All right. Um, can you talk us through the process? How um, how did you come up with the uh, the, the the composition and um, what was your inspiration on it? And what is your process in general? Um, do you draw it on, on like sketch base first, uh, or how do you work? Um, I think I think the image pretty much came to mind immediately. Uh, I didn't. I don't. I don't remember sort of like draw, sketching or drawing or struggling to think of an idea. I think I think I, I think I had the idea first, and then I thought, yeah, I should I should draw that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's it's all worked out in my mind. So the first thing I did was uh, take some photo reference of me dressed up as Nosferatu. I think you, I think I yeah. sent you. Send you can, me. I'll, I'll show that. <laughs> what happened to the beard, by the way? What was that? <laughs> oh, what. <laughs> Uh, that's the lockdown beard, I think. No, I, 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 uh, why did I? Go? Oh, I know. What, what, we have this thing in England called uh, Movember, where everyone grows a moustache okay. for okay, yeah, charity. Yeah. We have that too. Yeah. And my son, <laughs> my son challenged me to grow one, so I grew a moustache, and then I just got too lazy to shave it off, and the rest of the beard appeared. And then lockdown happened, and I couldn't get to a barber's and. I see. And, it, and it's hair, my hair grew long. And, uh, you look good, don't worry. It looks like totally yeah, natural. Fine. I don't mind. It makes me look older, but that's, that's all right. <laughs> but yeah, so you took the post. I think that's a really cool image. I, I love to see those reference photos when people do that and then like how, how they come up with the poses so, so they can draw them. I think that's really fun to see. And um, is, it, is it important also to dress up in a certain way for that uh, in terms of props? Uh, or? It's just I, I'd like fun. to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, I think, I think there are a lot of similarities between being a, a, an illustrator and being an actor, because I think you, you have to. I think I, I have, I think I'm a bit like I have to go like the full method artist, <laughs> the method actor thing, where you have to get yourself in the in, yeah. in the mind of of the character, especially <laughs> you're the... when you're drawing comic strips, because yeah. you've got to think about how each character. It uh, will stand. You've got to think about body language, facial expressions. I mean, quite often we sit here with a mirror, mirror and pull 
uh, you know, wacky expressions <laughs> or his photo reference. So I definitely, I, me in particular, I definitely like to, you know, really think myself into the character and, and uh, you know, I, mean, I, I literally do sound effects while I'm drawing. If I'm drawing an explosion, I'm going... <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's yeah, you need to definitely do a life drawing. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so as it happened, my wife used to be a goth, so she's got mm. plenty of goth clothes. And luckily she had a old jacket that was exactly the same as Nosferatu's. Perfect. And I had to suck the tummy in and button it up. And it was pretty good. It was pretty, pretty close to the... Uh, the one it, in the it film, does, yeah, it looks it looks almost mm. like it. So that's uh, that's really cool. And um, so, do you took the reference picture first, or did you start out uh, sketching out before? And and do you, uh, by the no. way, do you, do do you do it digitally or analog? Uh, I mean, normally I would sketch uh, on analog on paper, mm -hmm. trying to sketch ideas. But on this one, as I say, the image was fully formed in my mind. I knew what I wanted to do. Uh, so I didn't bother. So I just went straight in with the photo reference, mm -hmm. uh, and then and then, I mean, I, I even knew what I wanted in the background because I obviously did a lot of research on the film, and I found the location used in the film was it the the salt cellar in Lübeck? What yeah. do you call it? Lübeck. Lübeck uh, is correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, but they've got these great old sort of warehouses from the 1800s and uh, yeah like the hansa like the hansa sports. buildings uh, they had uh, yeah the and they're actually in the film and so i just yeah. basically found some it, it didn't take me long i just found the perfect reference really mm. for what i wanted to do to do because i wanted him to be sort of framed yeah by this that, uh, and that thing. gave me that gave me for example the coffin feeling with the house yeah uh, I, want, I wanted him to feel very sort of confined, uh, yes, sort exactly. of attractive. Yeah. Uh, so then, so, so then that was pretty much it. I mean, I had my photographic reference. Uh, I think I, I, I did. Uh, I don't think I quite had the hands. I think the, I drew the hands from with a mirror. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't quite the same, but it doesn't matter. It just it helped. I had I had at least had sort of shapes that I wanted. Uh, and then um, it's just a case of putting the background behind it. Uh, then I thought about all the hundreds and hundreds of rats, uh, <laughs> sort of like, like a wallpaper behind him. Um, and that, that, that was a combination of photographic reference of rats and borrowing a friend's rubber rat and drawing that. Mm. <laughs> he had like a a rat and made out of rubber and it was pretty accurate so i was drawing that as well and you i know, just built like a wall of rats behind him uh, you know what would have been amazing if there would have been like all all the eyes of the rats would have been a glow in the dark oh my god uh, why didn't i think of that that would have been amazing <laughs> still make it a variant 10 of 10. <laughs> okay we got a limited edition <laughs> So we got we got one limited edition on wood and one limited edition with glowing rat eyes. It's, I can keep making money out of this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I think that would have been pr pretty cool. With like, if, if I wish I thought it's a really good idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to consult with you every time I make a new poster. Now, sure, go ahead. I'll I'll um, I would consider myself an expert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least That's from the brilliant. consumer from the consumer perspective. Yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, so uh, you gave me also some other um, some other pictures which are kind of like yellowish. Is is that hand drawn, by the way? When you have that's uh... hand drawn, yeah. So okay. once I've um, once I've I got I jump on my computer and I put all my reference together. So you've got like me mm -hmm. and background and all the rats, and I, I make a sort of uh, a collage, yeah, um, a photo collage, and then I print that out. Uh, and then just put it on the light box and, and trace it. Oh, okay. And those, those yellowy drawings are sort of like the work in progress on the, the tracing. Ah, interesting. That's cool. I think I made, yeah. Uh, um, I think I even made a 3D model of his face. I don't think I sent you reference of that. That's interesting. Did I, did I? No, no, oh, no. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if you did. I mean, I have a couple close-ups oh, of sure. his face, but I don't, I don't think it looks like 3D model. But, um, no, no. 
how uh, why did you make 3d model um because uh, i i wanted i wanted to uh see what they look like from various angles mm -hmm. and also get the lighting right and stuff okay. uh, i think and also I, i think there was a uh, action figure that was really close to what i was doing so it was a combination of the 3d model i made and the, and the oh, action interesting. figure interesting um uh what, what was the color choice on this did you orientate yourself uh by the movie because you sent me some black and white uh images of um the poster which looks also great in my opinion but uh the i think the the sepia brownish version looks better uh yeah i think the sepia is like the next best thing to black and white really mm. and we always think when I mean, a lot of the um if you go on youtube a lot of the clips from nosferatu are, are either in blue or a sort of sort of brownie sepia yeah. um what was the decision on uh putting the ship in the box there i, I know it's an important element of course but uh why did you decide to go with that oh i think that's kind of inspired by um the artist alphonse mucha and the way he would always have like a central image and then little round bubbles with other things mm -hmm. going on in them I mean, uh, I'd like to have done more on it, really, but uh, I would like to have had some of the other characters in there. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought sort of just the one works fine. Yeah, there, there could also have been a variant having different. Yes, uh, yeah. People in the oh, different, pe different, different images inside the thing. That's a good idea. <laughs> so there you go. We have another 50 hints. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it looks really amazing. And then you also have uh, done. Did, did you do the typography for the um, for the title yeah. treatment? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think well, I sent well, a rough version. Yes, yes, you did. But how, how did you come up with that, or what was your intention of it? Um, let me have a think. I need to. I've got it on the wall. Let me have a quick look. See what memories it comes up with. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was. It's, it's kind a class, of right? Um, yeah. There's a skull and for the naught. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There's not a lot to say about it, really. I mean, I was just thinking of a. It doesn't. I think it's loosely based on an existing font, but I changed it so much oh, okay, you'd okay. never recognize it. Is it? It's by I the way. I'm, the 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 T looks like a fire like a fire axe. Is it? Oh, not deliberately. Okay, I was just wondering because it like it looks like a little bit like it. You know what I mean? I think the, the the font I you, you sort of used as a model it didn't nothing came down to pointy edges so I I, I sort of I, I made sure everything comes down to a pointy edge so yeah. it's like his teeth. Yeah. Um, yeah. So no, and also I'm very inspired by um, you know. Do you know Kevin O'Neill's work? He drew he draws the comic um, uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Okay. Yeah. I, I know I know the work, but I didn't know the the name before. Well, well, well years before he was a comic strip artist, he was like a graphic designer for comics. So he'd often mm -hmm. he'd often create logos for comics. He create I think he created the logo for 2000 AD mm -hmm. okay. and Star Lord, uh, and he'd also come up for you know individual stories like ABC Warriors. And I've always really liked his graphic design work. Um, uh, he always has really thick lines. Mm -hmm. And and very, mm -hmm. and everything comes to quite a, a fine point as well. So that I was definitely thinking of him when I was, I was trying to come up with the the logo. That's great. I, um, I that's great. Thick, thick line look. Yeah. Will there be in the future? Will there be a, a piece of your work, or is it just going to be the hundred and vice press is going to deal with it because you don't want to deal with this, or how how is it happening? Uh. I mean, do you mean for future prints? No, no. In terms of, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, a piece. Does it mean anything to you? Is artist proofs. It's like the artist what. Proofs. That's what you get basically of the. Uh, yeah, of, I've, got a, I've got a couple of artist proofs. There's there's some in the drawer which I'm going to leave to the grand my grandchildren one day okay. if I have, ever have. Any. But <laughs> I'm, ta I'm talking about about this print though. Is it? Uh, uh, you have that in hand as well uh, already, or? I've got some in my drawer and okay. some I've given back to uh, vice president said you can sell them as well. It's fine. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. Um, yeah, so this this will be the question on, on the print and the process. So you answered it really well. But since I do on my channel, mostly in German, though, some movie reviews as well, I wanted to know what um, 
what you like or you didn't like about the movie and how you would rate the movie from zero to ten. Well, Nosferatu. Yeah. The, yeah. Oh, well, ten. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I absolutely love it. I mean, as I said, the um, it comes from a. I, the, the, to do the to do the print was my idea because I love the film so much and I always find I do much better uh, alternative movie, movie posters when I actually love the material. Um, there's a couple of ones I've done I won't name them. I was sort of, oh, I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> I'll give it a go. And I should have said no because looking at the poster is just like, oh no, I should have said no. <laughs> so, <laughs> Me, and that's why I'm, I told you I'm fussy. And um, Vice Press, you send me this long list, and I'm like, nah, 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 nah. Because <laughs> I, I, I've got to love it. I've got to absolutely love it. Which is probably why the be I think the best thing for me to do is think of the films I love first. Just do the picture. I mean, I can sell the original if it if it never gets turned into a print, um, or or do it or print it myself. Uh, but hopefully. You know, it will it will mesh with what Vice Press wants to do, and we can put it out that way. Uh, but going back to the film, yeah, no, I absolutely love Nosferatu. I mean, when you what's consider your, it's one of the, what's your favorite part? Of, what's your favorite part in Nosferatu, or favorite scene, or moment, or um, I, I, just any of the the scenes where he's on screen? Because I just find him fascinating. He's just, I, just, I just can't take my eyes off him. I, <laughs> It, it's, it's like um, you know, the, you know that phrase I've come up with for computer-generated characters. The, you know the uncanny valley. Yeah. Where you can't quite believe what you're seeing is real. He just looks so weird. I mean, there's never been another human who looks like him. Yeah. Uh, and when you consider like this was like 1920, and yeah. the makeup is amazing. I mean, how much, I don't know how much of his, his makeup. Did he, did he maybe he actually looked. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's <laughs> maybe most most uh, I mean like the, I mean the facial structure should be maybe they made mm. them the nose and like the chin and ears obviously and uh, yeah. yeah but I think uh, uh, the foundation <laughs> was set uh, uh, but also what I like about him is he's so melancholic he's, he, he, he always looks so sad and pitiful through the film he's always got a oh, sort of expression on his face yeah. and I love that it's just sort of like Oh God! Look what I've become. It's awful, you know. <laughs> There's so much sort of despair in him, and, and, and I think it, it evokes. It's not like he's. Ah! Yeah, yeah, he's it's, not like a, like the like the the Bram Stoker Dracula from '92 or when it was. So yeah, he's no. he's definitely more of like a miserable existence, like a failed existence. So I think you can yeah, see that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see, uh, I just love that. I, I would say the, the the Klaus Kinski version you did manage to capture that because mm -hmm. I, I do like that version as well um, yeah, for the same yeah. reasons. It's Kinski's just called that. Though. Kinski's crazy though. <laughs> oh my god, he's <laughs> bonkers. <laughs> oh man, I just, this, there's this one German comedian. He does he does a very good Kinski impression of him, like screaming around, like screaming at people. It's like very oh, funny. God. I, uh, you can please send me the link because I would find that so I'll, funny. I'll send it. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. <laughs> but yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for coming on and oh, uh, talking about your art. It's uh, been a yeah, revelation. It's, so I uh, really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, we'll have a future interview uh, definitely on the way oh, yeah, here. Good. And um, well, yeah. I'll I'll tell all my movie secrets. <laughs> awesome. That's 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 what I wanted to hear. That's that's what we, why we do the interview. <laughs> because that's the fun stuff. I mean, you had you had already already some good stories. I really enjoyed it so far. <laughs> okay. Um. And now we will move over to James and talk about the rest of the releases. So stay tuned, people. Great. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. And here is James Hobson, my fellow co-host friend. And loser, <laughs> loser in the waffle draw by Jonathan Wright. Uh, was it right? I think. How you feeling, yeah. buddy? We wasted twenty minutes on oh, this um, before we could get going. <laughs> Precious daylight, the golden hour is uh, gone. Sorry, you missed the golden hour. Um, yeah. 
Yeah. Let, we, we'll just move on from the big loss. All right. Moving on from the big loss and moving on to a couple posters that came out in the last two weeks. And we're going to start right off the bat with Balna Gallery and some music. Still don't know what Guns N' Roses is about. And Vance promised me that he will explain it to me, but he didn't yet. But yeah, Guns N' Roses, our first poster by Dane. I think it's pronounced Dane. Dane Henry Jr. And this is a 24 by 18 inch print. G Clay, hand number edition of 200 and has a foil variant to go along with it. That is an edition of 75. Very rock and roll. I think a little bit... Looks, looks to me a little bit more Iron Maiden. I don't know why, but I guess it's a skeleton kind of look. But what are you going to say? Are you still there, James? You didn't say anything yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's either my, mine or yours. Probably my internet just went absolutely crazy. Bonkers. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what do you want me to say about this? I don't know if you're um, going to have to say anything. You can move on to the next one if you're not a <laughs> Guns N' Roses fan. I'm not I'm not a great Guns N' Roses fan. Um, I'm kind of surprised it's a G-Clay print. It looks like it would be perfect for a screen print. Um, mm-hmm. I thought all music prints are screen prints. I thought that's a, the that's a thing. Yeah, that's the thing. Weird. Ah, bottleneck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe everyone's booked up. Um yeah, I like like you. I I don't really know that much Guns and Roses, but it looks like it would fit in with that style, you know. That style, that particular style. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't have that. I mean, you've got like you've got the band members there as skeletons. I think I know that much. Oh, that's John Bon Jovi then. I guess the the one with the with the Rambo style headband. No. <laughs> Is it, no, he's he's not in Guns N' Roses, is he? Uh, Axel Rose. Yeah, and John Bon Jovi. Oh. Okay. I don't Maybe know. I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I'm I, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> research John that. John Bon Jovi in Bon Jovi. I'm gonna research that while you talk about the next bit. <laughs> I think Bon Jovi is the one on the guitar on the bottom left, but I'm not sure. Oh, all right. Is the other one is the other one Slash, the one with the hat. Is that Slash? <laughs> Was he in Guns N' Roses? I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure. We've got like Axl Rose slash, and then the know. guy, Guitar Man. Guitar Man. It's the Guitar Man. Roses. It's the Roses. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I was so wrong. Oh my god, I was so wrong. Bon Jovi was yeah. never in there. <laughs> I know. He's in Bon Jovi. <laughs> but <laughs> oh my god, this is horrible. See, that's how much I know about that shit. <laughs> Uh, starting off on the right foot here. <laughs> it's all right. We we don't really know that much about them, but yeah, it's see. There's a good. There you go. Lead Axl guitar. Axl Rose. Slash. Axl Rose is the the singer and on the keyboard. Yeah. Bass is yeah. Duff McKagan. Okay. He's That's the one. The he's the left. yeah. He's the one on the left there, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have uh, uh, Stephen Adler, who's the, who plays the drums and slash. Oh, yeah. On the lead guitar, yeah. I did know I did know Adler as well as a drummer, um, but so, I forgot his name. So but yeah, I wouldn't have known the, like the bassist's name at all. Okay, but yeah, let's uh, let's get yeah. cracking before I'm gonna. Do they all, more they all look like skeletons on Wikipedia as well? I don't know. Um, but yeah, next next release from from Bottleneck that we're gonna cover, uh, series by Mark Chilcott, um, continuing his Batman. Nah, on nah, 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 top nah, of the nah, building. Nah. <laughs> so yeah, we've got, got, yeah, it's got the same theme tune now. It's it's big. Um, so yeah, these are all G Clay prints, sixteen by twenty, and uh, in editions of one hundred. Um, we have this one, which is called Dawn. No, the first one is. These are in the right order. Yeah. We call, we, then Dawn is obviously the the other one. Oh, I see. I see what you've done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> tricky, tricky. Try to trick him. <laughs> oh, you got me, man. <laughs> got you good. So, yeah. Dusk, where are we at? Dawn with the red and yellow and orange mm-hmm. and sense, lovely huh? skies. <laughs> yeah, it does make sense now. That's why I was a little bit like, okay. Uh, <laughs> black and white. Is that one called black and white? It's called black and white. Okay. 
uh, bats flying. Silent night. Perfect Christmas print. Yeah. Why didn't they wait? They could have oh, waited. Holy night. Um. So yeah, Silent Night, and then Gargoyle. Gargoyles. That was a TV show. Did you watch that, by the way, back then? Nah. I, I used to watch uh, John Bon Jovi play in Bon Jovi. <laughs> in Guns N' <of> Roses? <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> I like Silent Night out of those. That's quite, that's quite cool. Uh, I like black and white, obviously. <laughs> but Silent Night is cool. <laughs> but this, this is very cool. Uh, I think it's Batman Noel. Which has like a very Christmassy theme, the 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 comic book, which is very cool. I like that uh, one a lot. I was recommended uh, the white the White Knight to read that recently. It uh -huh. sounded like an interesting thing where Joker kind of mm -hmm. comes good um, and like flips everything on its head. I uh, like the the Elseworld stuff, like uh, uh, Batman under gaslights or whatever it's called, or. Uh, Batman the Vampire or something like that. Where he's so many Batman. Dracula stuff, you know. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. All so right, moving Batman. on. Moving on to Wonder Woman. Yeah, uh, DC. Keeping it in DCverse. This one has been up uh, before. Uh, we talked about this one, but now it came out as a very cool antique print. It's by Juan Burgos, the man, the myth, the legend. And he did uh, Wonder Woman uh, 3D lenticular version, one millimeter PET, 18 by 24 inches, great size. Uh, and uh, this comes also as an armored version. And uh, the uh, the regular one is an addition of 135, and the armored version is an addition of 95. Pretty cool stuff, I'd say. I um, have a bit of a confession. Confess, my confess. It would stay between us. Not. Oh, Father. Yeah. I have a confession. There's um, 10 Hail Marys for you. <laughs> Chap. Please forgive me. Uh, Hail we Hail said that I wouldn't you, buy a print. You, you spirit to son to <laughs> um, I did buy a print if lenticulars count because I got this. I that's got not a print. So if that's not a print, people, that's how we argued this. That's how he tried to argue this with me. It's not a print, actually. And then I was like, <laughs> well, <laughs> it fell apart quickly. But yeah, so what are we going to do with James now? As, luckily, we uh, didn't set any rules on this one. What, what I'm going to get if he's going to, I should, I should have done. I, I'm going to get a more art print. I can't, I can't sanction that, I'm afraid. Okay, glad you're not uh, half owner of this whole no. venture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. I will just uh, yeah. We didn't bet. We didn't bet on it. So yeah, I fine. know we did not. I, I I'm saying that's what we should have done. Should have. That should was a chance. Hey. Again. Exactly. All gone. But people, maybe if you have an idea what James has to do, maybe he has to draw something—a one of one for me. And not just a stick figure man. But maybe you, you have an idea. Just let us know in the comments anywhere what James is going to draw for me, for you as a giveaway. We don't know yet, but <laughs> think of something. He's going to do it. I don't have any time for that at the, mo at the moment. But you have so me. much talent, so do it. <laughs> no. No excuses. Moving on. Moving on to some more talent. Um, this is Devin Schofler. Schaeffler, um, Schaeffler, 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 Schaeffler. Looks kind of Germanish. It does, um, but I think he is not. Okay, that's that's cool. That can happen. Yeah, quite a lot. Yeah. This is the Indiana Jones trilogy, um, a set of lithograph prints on pearlescent paper. Mm -hmm. Always really nice. These are sixteen goes, by twenty-four each. Yeah, it goes along with the with the number of uh, uh, another number, but the print for the Star Wars series he did. Last year. Ah, cool. It's like a continuation of that. It was also on, uh, it was also a trilogy on lithograph and pearls and paper. Nice, very nice. Um, yeah, that can look really, really good. Um, four hundred ninety-five edition. Yeah, I think it's with um, oh, what was the gallery? Was it Dark City, or somebody had, or was it Dark Ink Art, or something like that? 
somebody had uh, is, is doing this before and then bottleneck um, released uh, the rest of them I guess later something like that and I think it's the same case here again so it, it must be I think an older older print that's why they wrote underneath limited quantity available even though it is an addition of 490 oh okay yeah yeah also a uh, re-release basically is our next one and uh, I talked about it with the guys over at Vice Press and it's the world's end print by Matt Ferguson it's a screen print 24 by 36 inches hand number edition of 195 and yeah, it was uh, still that was a, I think it was a bigger bigger um, edition size at, in the end, right? When it came out, or was it cause I, or was it sold out like in the beginning? I, I don't remember exactly, but I'm not sure. It was a difficult difficult one to follow, isn't it? This one, yeah. Um, yeah. But I think it was still available for uh, maybe maybe less than it was before because like all the people that had bought it before uh, needed to be uh, served first. Yeah, for sure. All right, Dan. yeah, good, good that it happened. Indeed. Thank then you, Simon. Mister, Mister Four, uh, um, what was it? Four thirteen. Mister Four Thirteen oh, yeah. releases a print. <laughs> a B C D A B C D E F G Jesus. H I J K F. Whatever. Do um, you do count it to thirteen, dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan Mumford, also also known as Dan Mumford, uh, with a yeah, pretty cool teenage mutant ninja turtles print. Um, there's a lot of a lot of like different stuff referenced in this one, I guess. It's pretty full on, isn't it? Um, Bebop, and what's uh, and Rocksteady? Rocksteady, yeah. It's, yeah, this yeah, a lot of a lot of different things. Isn't it? Isn't that? Uh, uh, oh, there he is. I, I've overlooked him. Sh uh, um, what's his face? Was Shredder. Krang. Krang. No, Shredder. I, I've seen. Oh yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, it Krang. In the middle. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there was three different versions of this one. Um, they're all screen prints. Um, this one, in addition of two hundred. Then there was a glow in the dark variant, um, 150 available, and a final color variant, um, which was only 100 of those, and they're all 24 by 36 screen prints. Yes, sir, indeed. Dan Mumford, very nice. The style, keeping it, keeping it in his uh, in his uh, signature style here, and uh, yeah, also, um, but I would say this. Signature style is maybe a little bit off on the next artist that we're going to talk about, but I mean he has a s certain style, but uh, I think he can adapt very well, and it is Matt Ryan Tobin who has been here for the interview last week, and he released uh, the Cobra Kai soundtrack, uh, three different it iterations for this one. Um, the first one is uh, uh, I forgot what it was. The first one was I think some serious uh, some uh, was like the the cobra kai dojo that's like what what would be played in a cobra kai um dojo um environment with coming the, the fist punching through the mouth of the snake and then we have the miyagi do which i really love this one this print is uh, i mean mm. just having this as a print would be amazing um and then the last one is uh, best hits or, or i think or final hits or something like that is called and it's like like fight music in there. And as a bonus, you were able to grab this very cool original uh, Johnny Lawrence sanctioned cassette tape. Looking really awesome. And to go along with this one is uh, obviously the poster that uh, was uh, sold out faster than the drop countdown went down. <laughs> 24 by 36 <laughs> inches, edition of 175. Uh, is the screen print poster by Matt Ryan Tobin. What was up with that release? That was a crazy release, man. I, I missed... I, I, no, I, I kind of missed it, but then I saw someone put that they, they'd, like, restocked. Um, you want me to tell you what happened? Because I... I've yeah, yeah, definitely. I just I just knew about some kind of restock, like, which I clicked on to see if I could get it, it in it. It was crazy, dude. The thing is, this one was supposedly to uh go on at like i don't know six six o'clock my time whatever it was in, in the states then but um 
when the when the, when the drop timer went down to actually be released, it took for for I think for all of them it took a, like a couple seconds or for some even minutes to actually pop up first of all. So they had to look in the search bar, had to look uh, just the, the search for the poster. And uh, yeah, so that was the first problem. And then when it showed up, even for people after a couple of seconds on the drop side, it was already sold out. Like after, I think for some people, even after a second. So it, it's just, I don't know. And then some people were saying in the chat, it was, uh, it was on the side uh, like minutes before and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't know what the deal was and what happened there on Mono's side, but it sounded really weird and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Like Con controversy on the internet, but people, please don't be idiots. The artist yeah. has n has nothing to do with what happens on the gallery. No, sometimes movies. sometimes the gallery doesn't even have anything to do with what actually happens. Like yeah. our Vance Kelly release, um, that was all set up, and for some reason, like Shopify just decided that it didn't want to make the the posters active. So that one ended up going on like three minutes late. Um, so yeah, it's always going to be a manual upload for us from, from now on. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's just the platform, like and sometimes the game, you know, the gallery doesn't have control over that, but it's, yeah, yeah it is a pain in the ass when you're, when you're sitting there and waiting and waiting for, mm -hmm. you know, F5 or whatever. Yeah. Um, it is yeah, annoying. this one does, it seems weird. It is annoying, but you know, it's all part yeah. of the game in it. The only thing I would wish more it would be more some more transparency on the side on the side of uh, the galleries in this case to let let the people know what's up. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I mean, not everybody deserves the transparency because they're being dicks about it anyways. But um, for the people that actually have waited and would have loved to actually collect this one, would appreciate maybe a little bit more insight on maybe what happened or that there was a mistake or something like that and. A little yeah. sorry. Sorry goes a long way, I'd say. Yeah, I don't know what happened about that restock thing then, because yeah, some more did go up later on. Yeah. In the day. It was um, but... orders that have been doubled or whatever, but I don't know. Okay. Is that a usual thing? With... I've never like checked that with Mondo. I don't know if that's. No, but I heard about like a lot of people were complaining on in the comments somewhere that uh, was the the latest print uh, the the latest prints that were released had a similar problem, but um. Yeah, this one was sold out quick, but looking at the next one we are going to talk about, um, oh, this, the Mary Poppins this annoys one, me. It was still there. <laughs> Crazy! It's such a good print. Like, I think it's, I think it's a really, really great print. Uh, when I saw it before it dropped, I was like, "Oh, it's fantastic! Like, brilliant! That will go straight, straight away." But bizarre. I don't know. Is it the property? I guess I don't know. I I've read some people were not keen on the uh, on the certain like on the execution of it. They didn't feel like it was the Mary Poppins print. <laughs> okay. Okay, fair enough. Fair it enough. doesn't have to be the Mary Poppins print. I I still think it's really it's really nice. It's a take yeah, that I, I haven't too. seen before, like mm -hmm. in any kind of poster really. It doesn't it doesn't copy any other poster, you know, it's it's its own thing. Yeah. I think it's yeah. I think it's quite like a it's quite an iconic one to be honest. It's... Could you let us know about the uh, artist and so on? Um, no. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Jonathan Burton. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah, big one, twenty four thirty six. Um, there's an edition of two hundred and eighty, but obviously some still left, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, printed by DL. Yeah, three Mondo. Eleven color screen print, on what's the funny name? Nina Antique Gray One Hundred. There you go. As the paper goes for I'm all not, your yeah, paper heads. with the paper. Me neither, but I thought it was a cool name. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I think it's a shame. I really like that one. I think it's great. Next one is uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, uh, stain on, on the Disney side of things here. Which is very trippy. It looks like yeah. you had a bad trip and then you met Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Pretty weird. That's exactly out there. how I'd describe it. Yeah, it's pretty out there, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's by Taylor Dolan 
and also printed by DL Screen Printing, 18 by 24 inches, six color on Cougar Smooth uncoated white hundred. Yeah, Cougar Smooth is a is a fave. Um, if you're talking about papers, <laughs> yeah, I I uh, I still haven't made my mind up about this. I think I prefer the variant. I think so too. I pulled it up right now. It is an edition of 115, and the reg is an edition of 240. And uh, but I have to say, overall, I think it's too trippy for me. Hmm. I'm surprised they gave it the go ahead. Like the the colors also, like you know, it's like um, uh, even on the they're like very. Um, I don't know. I don't want to say it. It, it may. It, it's like a scary feeling. You know what I mean? It's not like colorful trippy as Muragaya does for example it's more like yeah, know, yeah. dark scary trippy yeah bad trip bad trip there you have it when, tri when trips go bad yep that's it for Mondo yeah. and uh, we're moving on to Vice Press which uh, I already talked about the one release with Chris Weston the Nosferatu one here just to show it again size is a weird size 18 by 34 inches and signed and hand numbered screen print and an addition size of 100. And yeah, moving on to our next one, James. It's The Thing by Flory. It's it's a thing. Uh, the thing is a thing. It's a it's a thing for The Thing. Um, we have some interesting things to say about this. Um, so is it, is it glow in the dark for both or just the variant? No, just for the variant. Okay, so the regular there is an edition of 200. It's a 24 by 36 screen print. Um, printed at Valhalla, eight eight colors. Um, and then with the variant, something, yeah, really interesting. There's a red glow-in-the-dark mm -hmm. uh, ink, which they've used on that. Um, that was limited to only 100. So I think yeah, that's going to was... be pretty sought after. Like, it's already sold out. It came. It came out uh, yeah. today, as we on a Tuesday we record, record on Tuesday this time, and it was already sold out. As I looked the last time, I don't know about the reg, but last I looked like it was like ten minutes after release, it was not sold out yet. But the uh, variant was gone, and um, yeah, so that's uh, really cool to see. Uh, Flory selling out a cool piece, and I like the the gl the red glow in the dark for that. Um, I have seen the red glow in the dark only once before on. Uh, Matt Ryan Tobin, I think, The uh, Quiet Place, the one he did, which is, I think, not as a glow-in-the-dark, but as a regular version uh, without the glow-in-the-dark effect, still available on, on the shop. And I think it's a really cool piece. I really like, like this one. It goes very much along the lines of uh, Juan Carlos Borgos's Quiet Place. Mm. Yep. Um, moving on to our next one. And... Um, uh, this one, I need to I need to check real quick. I think it was. Oh yeah, you see, I didn't. I wanted to say dark ink, but it was dark city gallery. And dark city gallery has some really cool movies on here, some Japanese ones. And this one is uh, the first one is Onibaba, and Onibaba is by Takato uh, Yamamoto, and this is a hand number screen print, uh, three hundred uh, three gram square meters of Naturalis paper. Limited edition of 120 by a si for, with the size of uh, 24 by 36 inches, and the variant version, uh, the this, the regular is the English one with uh, like a red um, with a red kind of glow on it and um, not glow but red uh, colors on it, and the variant is a Japanese variant which I really like more but I would have loved that to be in the red color of the regular like with the blacker background i, I think it feels a little bit uh more in contrast i think I, I i like the red the red version better but i love the japanese lettering mm. of course i like i like the coloration on the japanese and i like the japanese text so i'm, I'm happy with the treatment of the variant okay, there because cool. it kind of seems it. like yeah that kind of like off white cream paper i don't know that just seems to um bring to mind like those cream japanese kind kind of papers um, with decorated edges that kind of that kind of thing mm. so yeah yeah i definitely like like the variant of that one mm -hmm. um and then we uh we had a, a was it at the same time this one was released yeah 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 so that's kuraniko 
um, same artist, Takato Yamamoto. Um, this one on the same paper, um, same edition sizes, 120 for the reg and 60 for the Japanese variant. So yeah, I think they look very following, cool. on, following on. Yeah, they're both they're both really lovely. The the style and the artwork is uh, very cool. So uh, I think a couple were sold out uh, already, but I think the regs were still available. So um, definitely I lost uh, my check. Yeah, check that out if you really want that. It's a Dark City Gallery, so check it out as well. Um, next up is Pink Floyd. A Pink Floyd poster. Since I uh, wanted to do uh, more music posters and to include that in here, and uh, I did from Echo Print Gallery, and they did a very cool Pink a Pink a pl Plink, Plink Floyd release, and uh, this is for the May 4, uh, 1988 tour on a tour stop on Riley or in Riley, North Carolina, and the first one is a gallery edition and. Uh, this is a that's a regular screen print, uh, 150 uh, edition of 150, and then we have the rainbow foil, uh, which must probably look very awesome with this one. Um, and this is an edition of one hot, uh, 100, and then last but not least we have the sparkle foil they call it, and um, must also be, look really cool and very trippy. So um, yeah. Very cool looking screen print uh, of Pink Floyd. So definitely if you're into music, if you're a music lover and if you really love Pink Floyd, that's something you should look into. It's still available on the website of Echo Print Gallery. Yeah, Echo is interesting. It's quite, yeah, they, they quite new in music, just in music. Yeah, music prints. But they've got a lot of licenses um, mm -hmm. and they're, they're putting them out pretty regularly. Um, definitely worth checking them out and having a look at their other ones as well. Exactly. Then last gallery work is what? Um, last gallery um, is Ted Lasso by Nick Camperoni. Which that's, gallery is this one? 1988. I just want to say that's not the no no that's, that's not the gallery. It's uh, Spoke Art. Spoke Art is the gallery. Oh, it's right? a Spoke Art. Yeah, no, no, the gallery isn't Ted Lasso gallery. <laughs> Won't be <laughs> funny though. <laughs> um, yeah, the way this has been produced is really cool. Um, it's like a a stencil. Um, original uh, 12 layers stencil yeah. um, and a limited edition print as well available yeah. I, I'm, I don't know the edition size so it, it didn't say on the preview yet and uh, it's yeah it's coming out today later on today it will be released yeah I like these I like um, the artist style it does a lot of like stencil work over um, over different things <laughs> you know, paper oh, you are so what? eloquent with your words what? ted lasso gallery <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, shout out to joshua budik i heard you're a big fan so uh, i hope you i hope you got yours I, I saw the comments my friend um yeah moving on to all the digital uh, private commission illustration stuff uh, that has been released um lately and uh, we are starting off with a favorite of yours, James, uh, of mm. this release episode. It's the house bear, de house bear design. And um, he, I think it's a he, right? He did I Am Mother. It's a 24 uh, by 36, six color screen print. And it's also printed by our friends of Valhalla. And it's a limited edition of 65 signed and numbered. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is great. It's popped up. Um, it's Was also it available as a G Clay as well. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's like a um, cause Poster Spy released a collection a little while ago, but this one's kind of like come up as a as a screen print, um, uh, which yeah is available through the designer, I believe, uh, House Bear Indeed, website. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it, a recommender. Uh, yeah, you'll really like him, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, still like quite young into his career um but the last few pieces like the details um when you when you look into it it's it's ridiculously detailed really nice textures um there's a good stand my stand by me piece mm -hmm. uh rocketeer and then this one is like 
seems to be like the next step you know it's a really nice really nice print i think okay I haven't uh, haven't seen the film um so I, I can't really judge it on that aspect yeah. but just just from the just from the work i think it's i think it's really nice yeah the film was so so but it is what I it heard. is yeah <laughs> Okay, um, then moving on to a property we talked about, which is Nosferatu, and uh, yeah, take take over, James. Okay, Raphael Arola. Um, this is a private commission piece. Um, Raphael does a lot of kind of darker imagery, quite uh, quite painterly, I would say. Um, yeah, I really loved his uh, Star Wars, um, like the all the the whole um, all nine films uh, in his style. It looked really great. Yeah, it's a lot of really good stuff. Another another artist who's kind of um, sliding under the radar slightly at the moment, but like I'm sure in time will be better known. Yep, poster posse, uh, poster posse member. Yep, yep. But just underappreciated in in my view, like you know, Definitely. the quality well, of work is the, always really really good. By the way, what happened to your face, James? It's too much. I know. Time. I'm trying. I'm just trying to like it's sort too out. Dark, my friend. <laughs> I think it's the lighting, the camera, because your background got like so bright. Oh, okay, I've turned my circle, magic circle on. <laughs> I don't know. Magic circle, I... aka ring light. <laughs> No, it's the magic circle. The magic uh, circle. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's because Nosferatu has like appeared and it's all gone real dark. Yeah. It's gonna be like Yeah. yeah. Indeed. Okay. okay. Uh moving on to another great, also from Poland, like Rafal. Um it's Krzysztof Tomarski and he did um uh, uh, Fast and Fury's work. His son loves cars. So he had to take on this job. He did a very cool uh, Fast and Furious. It's not a poster. It's promo artwork for Plain Archive, which is a South Korean, I think it's South Korean, um, company that puts out a promotion for Fast and Furious, Fast 9. And uh, yeah, so um, he created some artwork for that. And I think it's in like postcard size or a little bigger than postcard size. And uh, that's what he did his artwork for. So that's why you see... Uh, not just the post a little more than that there uh from his tees looking really cool really liking it yes yes sir yes all righty yep looking like i have never watched a fast and furious film um I not don't know even if I'm what out. no interesting yeah yeah okay but yeah looks good looks uh it's just like it's becoming my like the standard quote now like yeah it looks good yeah cool. <laughs> put it on a poster yeah it looks exactly good. looks good james hobson says looks good yeah that's worth that's worth a lot of money if you get what james hobson says looks good the, st the stamp of <laughs> authenticity <laughs> moving on to something else that looks good um <laughs> this is uh <laughs> the umbrella academy um it's like uh i think it was a personal project by lisa shimskaya uh another artist who whose work i really really like um yeah this is a great take really interesting color to use mm. on that one um it looks definitely good <laughs> <laughs> looks good all right <laughs> moving on to mr phil shelley and he did a take on star wars which first of all looked like a microphone i thought he's going to do like a disco number but no it's the death of star <laughs> pierced by a uh, lightsaber basically and uh, this is for new hope also a private com uh, not private commission but his own uh, digital illustration and uh yeah it looked really cool um i really liked this kind of like looking at it from a color perspective and this orange style, very simple. I really, I really liked it. I had, I, I thought it was very enjoyable and it looked good, obviously. That's, I mean, if it looks good, yeah, it's in the show. Did you, did you put um, thumbs up right now? Yeah. 
okay it's um, i'm gonna have to i'm gonna need a photo of you like doing this and it looks good it's good yep <laughs> looks good four stars <laughs> um so, next yeah the next one that looks good um is julian or julian uh rico um with his looks spirit good, huh? people would say he looks he looks good um and his spirited away piece looks good um <laughs> He just stop saying looks good. Jesus. It does. It's great. Like, um, yeah. it, it's, I mean, it takes on the same, like, visual look as, as the anime. Um, yeah, I mean, I so, think it's a... but it's an interesting composition. Uh, yeah, like, I like the composition too. And I like that it's on par color. with his other work. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, th I think he pushed, I, th I think he pushed himself. I think he's getting better and better every time. He's doing a lot of work. Uh, producing a lot of mm. posters, um, but I think he's getting better and better. Which is good. <laughs> Looks good. It's good. <laughs> Andrew I'm, Kwan. I'm back. Like, I'm nice and colorful again. Look. <laughs> Andrew <laughs> Andrew Kwan is our next piece. And he did uh, like, a, like a tribute fan poster uh, for the Green Knight, which he is really excited for. Um, and I think it looks really cool. Tom says it looks really cool. Yeah, I have it more does. to say than that. It looks really cool because I like the obviously the green and the and the uh, yellow, the, uh, the the those contrast colors there, and uh, the the way the perspective is. Um, looking at um, Dave Dev Patel's um char uh, like character in there, and then like what he probably will become in the end. So um, that's uh, oh really no amazing. spoilers! Come on. Have you not read the thing? <laughs> no, I haven't read it. Thanks. Oh, Jesus Christ. Age superstar. But yeah, um, I think that's really cool. I'm sorry if I spoil anything here, but um, sh sh are you going to spoil something here on, on the show or is that a no-go? What, uh, Green Knight? Yeah. Yeah, there might be... Um, there might be some things going on with um jake jake contu so if you this is going out wednesday right yep so basically just make sure that you um are joining fans of jake contu's uh facebook group and he has some exciting artwork which will be uh available this week exactly so that's that's all i'll say and it, I, i'll tell you it, it looks very good and it's uh yeah james keeping it very vague but keep your eyes peeled yeah all the information will be on uh jake's fan uh, fan fans of group on there facebook you go okay james uh, yeah. what's our next piece next piece um is by beth morris um the Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant. It's a very nice piece of... It's a very nice piece of uh, sort of like key art, almost. Mm -hmm. um, it's a is that illustrated? I can't tell if it's illustrated or... I think it is. Uh, it's a, I don't know how Beth works, but uh, yeah. I think it is, though. It's very nice, because like, it looks like... It looks like a sort of like Photoshop... Um, image but it looks it does look hand done so whether she's like composed that mm -hmm. in photoshop and then use that as the reference to illustrate thus yeah really nice very neat really nice for this fussbinder classic um also a very cool illustration is uh done by uh thomas walker uh, for the craze for the blu-ray release uh, that is happening on july 12th and yeah this looks really cool i enjoy uh seeing this kind of artwork and um yeah the legendary craze Next. yeah the legendary your heroes <laughs> my heroes <laughs> okay, yeah. uh moving on to something from attack peter um this is his yes new part of um his own ip Takaro. exactly um see that little t in the bottom left hand corner um 
so whenever it's part of the Takoro universe, mm-hmm. <clears throat> the prince gets stamped. And this is a, a new kaiju um, yeah. to be in, you know, part of that world, uh, Golakiri. Um, yep. So this one um, was revealed at the Skybound Expo last Friday. Uh, it's going to be 30 by 20 in size. Um, and it was an edition of 70 prints. Looks really amazing. I really like the style of like all the little people in there and like other uh, sentient species that are not human. And uh, yeah, it looks really cool. Mm-hmm. Like like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, love it. See, I, I have to say, uh, I love this alien piece, but I have to say when Peter does his Takoro stuff, that's the best. That's when he's the best. I really like his like original artwork, basically, which is not any anything. Um, there's a yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of character in in his own stuff. Like I think that that comes through so much. It's it's like you know his imagination mm-hmm. on the paper. Like that translates really really well. Um, I loved I loved the alien piece, and I tried to grab that. Um, just because I visually, I, I just really, really loved that piece. I thought it mm-hmm. used, you know, like the spirals as the, the yeah. smoke. Like, I just thought that was it was fantastic. But yeah, in like his own stuff is almost it's a completely different thing. It's um, yeah, it full of character, good. full of character looks mm-hmm. good. Um, Use yeah. that, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's a two more prints we have in store this weekend. First one is a private commission by Robert Bruno for John Wick. It's an 18 by 24 uh, print and uh, the A piece should be announced soon. So uh, check on in the Robert Bruno fan group uh, or on his Instagram, Twitter, or probably as well where he posted this uh, and you can hit him up for a piece in soon. Looks really cool. I really love that. Uh, he used the colorway, the, the colors that um, remind you of John Wick uh, and uh, this kind of like brush paintbrush uh, style uh, that he put on there and um, yeah amazing 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 yeah exactly what you've said um, so we're going to the last piece now I believe mm-hmm. you believe correct <laughs> <laughs> I believe it is one of our favorites again Juan Carlos Ruiz Burgos with um, an OG uh, an afternoon draw watercolor <laughs> with it, yeah just you know chilling this in guy. the afternoon um, this one is like an analog piece with watercolor mixed media um, of Brad Pitt mm-hmm. featured in Fight Club um, and I believe this one is going to be made available to someone his yeah uh, just inviting offers I think exactly i think it's a yeah it's a one of one and uh yeah so it's uh, it, what do you say did he uh, waffle uh, i thought he's just gonna offer it to somebody who uh, whoever wants it no no yeah i think he's just inviting offers um okay yeah, so. at the moment on his in his group on facebook yeah um it, yeah it won't be printed it's just an og um him having fun relaxing chilling and so letting it draw don't sleep on yeah. it if you're a brad pitt fight club juan carlos fan Yes. Indeed. Okay, this is it for this week. James had a long day. I had a long day. We don't have any words for this anymore. So, um, yeah. <laughs> we just look good, I guess. And uh, we're going to be signing off and uh, talking to you guys uh, in two weeks from now with some more cool art uh, from the great scene that we are uh, luckily part of. And, um, yeah, next week I'm going to have an, uh, it's going to be an interview on, uh, on Wednesday coming out with Courtney Autumn Martin. And she is a very cool artist, a children's book illustrator and, uh, tackled some cool topics that are not that often, uh, being tackled in the old movables world. Also, she's a crazy collector. She has a very big collection. So, uh, stay tuned for mm-hmm. that. If you want to know more about that. Uh, it's a fun uh, we had a fun chat and it's going to be released next week thank you james for stopping by and um, no worries we'll see we see all you guys in two weeks take care guys bye bye bye